ever wonder why a basketball almost never reaches the height it dropped from when you let it fall freely? Do you know why that happens? Yes or no? I'll explain it either way. Haha. <laughs> It is important for the person to keep dribbling or else the ball wouldn't reach its previous height it started from. The ball's height would gradually get lower and lower every bounce. It's not magic. Observe this gray man right here. Look at the basketball's gravitational potential energy. When he lets go of the ball, the potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy on its way down hitting the floor. But why did the ball not reach the same height as before? Because when the ball hit the ground, the kinetic energy got converted to thermal energy. Friction is a big factor in basketball for players to be able to do tricks and confuse their opponents, leaving them so lost. Basically, Michael Jordan with the ball pretends he's going one direction and driving towards the net, but he quickly stops and goes the opposite direction. Observe the footsteps and the forces being applied. He tricks his opponent, pulling off a quick movement to the right, which would be the applied force. When his foot slides across the wooden floor for a split second, the kinetic energy slows his foot down until it comes to a complete stop. For that situation to occur, the kinetic friction would have to overcome the applied force so he could stop and switch directions. When that happens, his opponent is lost and now on the floor, as you could see. And now Jordan could take an open shot. Newton's first law. Law of inertia. I quote, an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. LeBron James is running at a constant velocity. He jumps to catch the ball in midair and slams it in the net while his opponent gets knocked over trying to stop him. The reason his opponent couldn't stop him from getting by is because he couldn't generate an external force strong enough to stop him from scoring. LeBron James was moving so fast that his inertia was too high. LeBron James has an outstanding mass compared to the player he just annihilated too. For the player to stop him from dunking, he would have to be running at a constant velocity towards LeBron James and apply a force that could cancel out the force LeBron James exerted. The projectile is an object upon which the only force acting is gravity. The ball is the projectile in this situation. Projectiles have both horizontal and vertical components, although in this case, throughout the path of the ball, change will only occur in the vertical direction due to the influence of gravity. Ideally, the horizontal component of the velocity should not change. However, there will be a small slowdown in the horizontal direction because of air resistance. The vertical velocity of the ball will continue to decrease on the upward path until it reaches the top of the parabola. The vertical component of the velocity is zero. After that point is overcome, the vertical component changes direction and the magnitude now increases in the downward direction. The vertical distance travel during each subsequent time interval increases because of downward acceleration due to gravity. Another physics principle utilized in basketball is Newton's third law, which states that every action has an equal but opposite reaction. The player pushes down on the ball with a certain amount of force, and so the ball pushes back on the hand with the same force. It falls to the ground due to gravity. However, it comes back because the amount of force that the ball hits the ground with, the ground pushes back up against the ball with the same force, causing it to come back up. Aspect of basketball where calculating the physics can be interesting lies in passing. The idea of catching a pass can be analyzed using the equation f equals mv over t. In using this idea, the greater the time is the lesser the force will be and thus the pass will be a lot easier to catch and not drop. The idea of catching the perfect pass comes from the laws of motion and energy. If the ball is initially received with elbow slightly bent, the arm should be allowed to absorb the force of the oncoming basketball and the ball should end up being caught close to the chest. This can be more easily explained in physics with the help of a couple simple formulas. It is known that in physics that the mass of an object multiplied by the velocity of the object equals the linear momentum of the object. It is also known that the momentum divided by the time it takes the object to impact is equal to the net force that the object will have upon impact. In other words, by the player catching the ball with arms extended and slightly bent elbows, allowing their arms to slow down the ball before hitting their chest, then increasing the time it takes the ball to impact since the momentum is divided by the time in the formula discussed above, increasing the time will make the net force smaller when the ball is received into the chest. This will result in a nice, soft reception of the basketball and a smaller chance that the ball will be dropped.